All right. Uh, now I, I have an introduction, but uh, you want to you, you want to ask people where they're from, right? Just put it in the chat bar. My voice. Tom uh, Tom Hodgers is from Venezuela. Okay. Ah. And Mohammed Ibrahim, where are you? Ah, I don't see that coming up in this chat bar. Uh, is that coming up? Oh, okay. All right. I see. Okay. No, I just have to put the slider down. All right. Yes. Uh, Mohammed, uh, when when she comes into Second Life, that that uh, echo will stop. Okay, North Carolina, Nancy, yeah. I'm in Acton, Massachusetts. And uh, Lynn, you want to mm -hmm. tell me who you are? Yes, I just typed it in. Oh, I'm right okay. on, just right, just north of New York City. Tom <laughs> Bentley, do you want to tell people where you're from? I think that's the only other uh, person on the line right now. Oh, yes, yes. USA, okay. Hmm. All right, so are any of the people in on the whiz screen now coming into Second Life? And ask Anthony. And they, they will have an ongoing app, uh, option, right? Chat, chat op option. They can be writing in chat, although I may not pay attention to what they're writing. I hope someone will. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, will the people on WIS be able to see the chat box? in Second Life? No. All right, so how do we translate from one to the other? Because in here, people are going to ask questions or make comments. Okay. Uh-huh. And I'm going to minimize the whiz, uh, uh, just, just, see. okay. All right. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope everybody is still with us. <laughs> <laughs> Brave new world takes a little getting used to, and there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of echo here. And uh, both for Liz and me, this is a new experience to to be in a, a three places at once. <laughs> they said it wasn't possible, but it is. <laughs> so, uh, well, I want to welcome everybody, and uh, as you know. Uh, the description says that in this workshop we'll describe and demonstrate how we use Second Life technology 
for exploring creative processes in lifelong learning. And we emphasize the potential for whole brain health, vibrant eldership, community building, and new ways of teaching and learning. And uh, they, they, I hear somebody speaking. I think the other sound is on so that we are, um, we're hearing it, I'm hearing an echo here. I don't know if anybody else is. I heard a man's voice. Uh, other people should have their speakers off at this point, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, the session was listed to last for 60 minutes, but it'll be more like 90 minutes. Uh, I'm Neela Miller, known as Marley Molina in Second Life. And uh, this is my friend and colleague, Lynn Barrett, <clears throat> or Wisdom Keeper, or she's known as Liz. Wisdom Seeker. W Wisdom Seeker, yes. Right, thank you. Uh, and I'll be presenting for the first part of the program and doing a demonstration with Liz, uh, showing you what I do here. And then Liz will introduce herself later and tell you about her work. I've been in Second Life since 2007, and my group in Second Life is called Octagon Creative Exploration. And I invite any of you who plan to be around Second Life and are interested in creativity, education, and psychology to draw, join my group or to add yourself to my subscriber board. Those of you who are sitting here, if you just look on the wall of the octagon, right in back of us, there's a black screen. And if you just click on that, you're then subscribed. It's very easy. And right next to me, you'll see a blue mushroom. And if you want to get some resources and background, including an abstract uh, a paper de describing, you can get it that way. Uh, my group, the Octagon for Creative Exploration, offers programs which make use of arts-based tools combined with role plays uh, and other kinds of uh, methods for enabling participants to gain insight to shift perspective and do problem solving. The content focus can be ideas, values, feeling states, or various issues. The process is usually interactive, and we present a different way of using this virtual technology. My particular interest is to do this symbolically and metaphorically. Uh, a lot of people use the technology here immersively. In other words, they're interested in building structures or creating landscapes or classrooms. I like to use the building potential for uh, creating symbolic representations. And uh, that's what we're going to be uh, demonstrating. But I'd like, to, I'd like to start with you uh, and uh, maybe whoever is uh, Minding the whiz board. Is there somebody actually is looking at what's being chatted there, Nan? Uh, we could do this uh, right in the chat bar, wherever you are, uh, a word that describes your vocation, uh, such as a, a teacher, a professor, a curriculum, or a course designer a student, an artist, musician, a writer, a psychologist, a coach, a group facilitator. So just so we get a little bit of an idea of who's gathered here, uh, and that when I do the demo, I can then maybe address some of those vocations. Uh, so either in this chat bar, if you're in Second Life, or on the Wiz chat bar, please put a word or two about your vocation. And could someone, uh, is there a way, Nan, for someone on the whiz screen to tell me what people are saying in that chat bar? Of course, you've turned off your sound, so I'm going to put that back on so I can see what people are saying. All right. Software engineer, <laughs> good old Tom Bentley. All right, let me see uh, other things. Joshua, Muhammad, 
Raven, math teacher, teacher, okay? Are there any people on the list who are not teachers besides Tom Bentley? Adult ed and psychology. Some of you, of course, have several vocations like I do. Okay. All right, so we have mainly educators here uh, with a couple of IT and engineer people <clears throat> thrown in and uh, people who have an interest in psychology and learning. Would you say that's accurate? Great. All right. Uh, so I, let me tell you a little bit about me and my background before we get to a demonstration. I've been using Second Life technology as an extension of what I've done in my regular career. I co uh, combine a background in many arts, education and psychology, humanistic psychology. I started out early, early as a classroom teacher at the high school level, level and then later taught some college classes. And I've done training in corporate, nonprofit, military, medical, and other environments. I was trained uh, both as a Gestalt therapist and in Jungian process work. I'm also these days currently a composer and a visual artist. And I've done quite a bit of theater work and writing. I've written a couple of books. And if people are very interested in the kind of symbolic uh, way that I work, I do have a manual and you can ask me about it later. I'm excited about the potential of Second Life for teaching and learning, whether it's in a content area such as literature or history, or in the exploration of the human psyche and the creation of an interactive learning environment. I collaborate with others like Liz in developing programs using as much of our skill sets as possible. However, my orientation is to the process more than the product. In other words, I'm very interested in how to make the educational process as creative as possible, almost regardless of the content or subject matter. That's why it was exciting for me to see how this Second Life technology could be used in the service of teaching and learning in a broad array of areas. And Liz and I are both particularly interested in adult education in later life. And she'll tell you some more about what she's been doing with that. Uh, today, I'm going to start by describing some of the projects we've developed here using a little slideshow. So you, you see this screen behind me. Now, the people who are on the WIS board will have to, I guess, they'll have to wait and see it on the YouTube, right? But I will be describing what it is uh, we're looking at. So uh, the board is called Octagon Creative Exploration, the name of my group. And I click on it, and the first thing that comes up is Visions of Self. In this program, uh, this involves photographs, paintings, and sometimes a combination of the two. And in this project, I ask people to make self-portraits on their computers and upload them to Second Life. Uh, in this type of exercise, I might ask each person to represent different aspects of the self. That can be from real life or their virtual world experience. So that's where the symbolic modeling comes in. Sometimes I'll have the parts talk to each other. And these parts of the psyche each have their own agenda, but all live in the same body. So it's important that they know each other and can get along and even draw on each other's strengths. This is a way to gain insight and new ideas that go beyond just thinking or talking along. So I'd like to introduce you. Uh, I've got three of my own self-portraits in here. Uh, I didn't use others because I have to uh, get permission from other people to show their work. So it's much easier just to show my own. This is Sloth. This uh, uh, entity likes to just dream, imagine, sit around, fantasize, think about grand schemes, uh, get ideas, and uh, doesn't like to move around much, just likes to be very still. Uh, 
This one is called Crying for a World on Fire. This is uh, the part of me that is affected by the conflagrations and the violence and the natural disasters that happen very often all around us. And she's trying to hold steady in the middle of this, but she's crying rivers of tears. Uh, now, when I do this, I actually ask other people to say what they see because people project onto this and then they can get to what their own issues are with these uh, representations. And the third one here is Miss Big Personality. Uh, this is the one that says, you know, get up off your duff, do something. we got to take action here. We need to perform and entertain people. We need to enjoy life. We're a very colorful part of this entity, which happens to be me. Now, can you imagine if these three parts got into a dialogue with each other, the kinds of things they'd say to each other? But we're not going to take time on this because it would take the rest of the hour, actually. But I'm sure that you can imagine that Miss, Miss Big Personality would have quite a bit to say to Sloth and vice versa. All right, so now we go on. Here's a program I do called Coaching with Creative Process. We ask volunteers to choose a challenge to work on and use the geometric shapes that are available. Uh, and this is what the little paper in the blue mushroom will, will talk to you about, and also what the demo will be about today. Uh, so you, I ask people to take something from the build program to symbolize whatever aspect of the challenge they'd like to investigate more. The purpose is to gain insight or get clearer about the nature of the issues involved, possibly play with solutions or integrations. Not necessarily to solve the problem. It's a way of gaining perspective that you'd never get by thinking or talking alone. Uh, so here's a, here's a picture of me doing a coaching session. And, uh, I don't know, can you see the white hand pointing or doesn't that show up? I'm not sure it does. Uh, Liz, does it? Do you see a white hand pointing on the screen? Hello? I Hello? don't, I don't. All right, well, you see a woman in a black and white dress standing next to something that looks sort right. of like a crown, right. okay? Uh, so uh, in, uh, in this coaching session, she was uh, using the same focus that we're going to use a little later, which has to do with feelings about virtuality, teaching and learning in virtuality. And uh, so she came up with this, this figure, and then we did various things with it to try to milk it for different kinds of ideas about it. So I just wanted you to see what a class looks like. All right, here's another one called Shakespeare's Women. For, for those of you who are content oriented, uh, I used to be an English uh, teacher. I did a lot of work with literature and taught a lot of Shakespeare stuff. So I had five women pick um, uh, monologues from five different plays, find costumes in Second Life that went along with their character, build an art piece that in some way symbolically represented their character. And then they came and performed it on a stage that we had, something like this. Uh, and then I uh, worked with them on what the symbolic representation was about. And then I worked interactively with the audience and asked them what the contemporary form of that archetype would be in our society. So here's mine. I wonder if anyone recognizes, whoops, uh-oh. In order to get back to that slide, I have to go all the way through. Unfortunately, I can't just go back, but I would like to go back. 
to that one just to play with you a little bit on it. Almost there, almost there. Here we are. Okay. So can everybody see this? Cleopatra. Yes. Okay. So Cleopatra, uh, so this was my symbolic representation of Cleopatra. For those of you who are uh, here and can put things in the chat bar, what aspects of Cleopatra do you recognize from what you see here? If you were going to say to yourself, well, how is this a symbolic representation of that character? What do you notice? I'm waiting for people who are sitting can, here. Can, can people talk? I think people they, can talk. They can if they prefer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many people do we have here? Okay, Scuffy, Jasmine, and Ewan. You are you're the three that are not part of my crew. All right. What about the headdress? Uh, pay attention to some of the, the details. Look at the color of the headdress and see where that color is in the rest of it. Yes, it's gold. And what would gold represent? Wealth, exactly. So at that point, Cleopatra was like the richest woman in the world. And you see what she's holding? What is she holding, do you think? The globe, yes. The oceans, the sky, the moon, right? The cosmos, yes. Now I want you to notice her mouth. What else do we know about Cleopatra? She lied. And you see her red tongue and her red lips, very sensual and ruthless. You see her eyes. OK, so that just gives you an idea uh, that the symbolic representation of the character is another way to explore the character besides what's in the monologue itself. And the monologue for me was, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but just the first few lines so you recognize it. I dreamed there was an emperor, Antony. Oh, such another dream that I might see, but such another man. His legs bestrid the ocean. His reared arm crested the world. His voice was propertied as all the tunic spheres and that of friends. But when he meant to quail and shake the orb, he was a rattling thunder. So she, she has met her match, in other words, in Antony. Like, here is a man that, that can stand up to her and that she could stand up to. Uh, and uh, they had quite a thing going on. Now, who was the representation of this in contemporary life? Can you think of the... a 20th century representation? Okay, well, in films, we know that uh, Elizabeth Taylor, who was also very wealthy, very interested in diamonds, played the part of Cleopatra, had this great love, blah, 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 was very sensual uh, and ruled by Aphrodite, which is the, the, the archetypal goddess behind this. Okay, so we're going to go right on. I, I am not watching time here. We're not doing too badly, right? It's just, just been a half hour. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's great. All right. So now, the next part is composer-artist improvisations. 
uh, I'm wondering if who are musicians or artists. <clears throat> This is a very interesting uh, experiment here. We gather instrumentalists who improvise with artists who can spontaneously create. The musician starts an improvisation. You see, uh, that's my friend Tip Corbett sitting at the white piano there. And the artist builds something that expresses the energy of the music. The audience participates with sharing poetic images in the chat box. Then we reverse the process and have the artist start first and the musician improvise to what he or she sees. At the end of the session, we invite anyone who wants to build something together based on the music they're hearing. So here's a group build based on the music that they're hearing. And uh, I think that that's uh, a wonderful musician named Prowess Reina, who does a lot of concerts also in Second Life, playing. And this is, as you can imagine, a lot of fun, and also teaches participants to keep their visual and auditory and verbal senses alert and responsive. Because the artist has to listen carefully before uh, making something visual. And then the reverse is true, that the composer who's used to uh, being in the auditory channel has to watch what's happening visually and get inspired by that to create something auditory. Okay, uh, could the people here tell me uh, if I'm coming across, if you're understanding what I'm saying so far, <clears throat> and uh, if you, uh, okay, great. Thank you, Scruffy. Starlight, hi, Star. Nice to see you, thank you. Okay, good. Because uh, so, sometimes in Second Life, unless you get feedback, you feel like you're sort of talking into a void. You know what I mean? I wish I could follow this, the stuff that's happening in the other chat bar too, but maybe someone can tell me about that later. Now, if you want to see samples of videos and other information about what I do here, you can go to my website and that's in the uh, this blue mushroom. This blue mu mushroom, uh, where's my stand thing? Here it is. Okay, you see this blue mushroom over here? Make sure to click on it. Uh, people who are on the Wiz site, I've got a blue mushroom in Second Life that's got all of these uh, resources. But eventually when you join Second Life, which I'm sure you will, you'll be able to get all this stuff. Um, but I'd like to write in the, in the uh, chat bar so that if that's not the case for some people, you still know how to get to my website. Uh, Fran, was that on that uh, board that you made? I don't remember. Okay, so there it is. That has all the videos I've made here and um, interviews and all different kinds of things. Okay, great. Um, what you do is you go to my site and then you look in the media link and the project link. And uh, that'll pretty much cover all this stuff. <clears throat> okay, before we uh, proceed with the uh, demo, Scruffy, can you just uh, click on the, the uh, are you having a problem getting the thing for the mushroom? Just click on it and, and it should come to you. Yeah, good. Okay, you can, you can sit, sit down somewhere. All right, so before we proceed with the demo now, please have your keyboard or your pen and paper handy and see what ideas you get for possible applications of this process, which you might apply to your own teaching or learning. And after the demo, we'll have a chat about what you've come up with, okay? All right, now. 
concentrate because I'm going to describe two kinds of processes and demonstrate two kinds of processes with lists. One is an inside out process. Let me just seat myself for a minute here. Why can't I sit? I don't know. Interesting. Oh, there I go. Okay, and I'm going to close this board so it's not distracting. <clears throat> okay, so the first kind of process is outside in, and the second is inside out, and then they're in no particular order. I usually give people a choice about what they want to do, but I'm going to describe them to you. Okay? So, uh, In, in the inside out kind of process, you start with a feeling, and I connect people to their bodies at the computer, and I ask them to focus on a topic and pay attention to what kind of feeling it gives them uh, and uh, what comes up for them when they concentrate on it, and then to manifest it in the object that they put on the screen. All right, and then the outside in process is to create something without thinking or feeling at all about it, just to make an object, put a color on it, play around with it until it feels interesting to the body at home or to, to the person who's watching in both places. And then we find out what it's trying to tell you. Now, this is inductive and deductive. So different people uh, like to approach this in different ways. So that's a hint to you. If you use this with your students and you can give them a choice about this, uh, you will find that some of them will choose one and some will choose the other. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I want to show you both. So I'm going to have Liz uh, join me in the center. And uh, I'm going to ask you, Liz. Are you okay. with me? Yay! Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you uh, uh, to make a choice. But I want to tell the audience here that we looked for a topic we could use as a focus, which might be of interest to anyone who is attending the, these uh, courses. And, and we came up with feelings and attitudes about virtuality as a venue for teaching and learning. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what our focus is going to be. Now, Liz, you can choose whichever one you want to do first. And uh, uh, I'm an I'm an inside out person. Okay. I'll, I'll so start with that. Start with that. And then later I'm going to have Liz demonstrate the other one just so you see the difference in the way the two work. Okay? Uh, mm -hmm. And I want those of you who are watching to keep track. Uh, I asked you, you know, to have your screen or pencil and paper handy. Keep track of any questions you have or ideas that you get while you're watching this and how they might apply to your own situation. Uh, or you can just watch and have fun that way. <laughs> That's fine with me. So. So here's how I approach this as an inside out exercise. I ask the person I'm working with, in this case Liz, to first tune into her body at home at the computer and focus on this topic, which we could put in the form of a question, such as, what are your feelings about teaching and learning in a virtual environment, and in this case, in Second Life? Uh, now, Audience, again, I want to remind you, you can go along for the ride to see what occurs to you if you were doing this, or you can simply watch the demonstration and write down any questions you have about it for later. Okay, Liz, let's go. Okay, how should I start? So Liz is now paying attention to her body as a barometer to, to 
give her information at the computer at home and I'm asking her to pay attention to what kinds of feelings you get when you focus on virtuality or second life as a place for teaching and learning. Okay. And let's see what you put out as a symbolic representation of that. Okay. Okay, I think I would put out Okay, so we're seeing a big white sphere, but let's see if that's the end of it or if Liz wants to do anything to it. Mm. And she keeps, she keeps uh, consulting with her body uh, feeling to mm. ask whether what she sees on the screen represents what she feels about the topic. Okay? Uh-huh. Okay, so I think I need to change the color for one thing. This okay. is the base color, so I would like to change the color of it. Uh, and I think I would like, let me just see. Uh, so the people on uh, on the WIS site now. Uh, Liz has changed this big sphere from white to a kind of gold. Yeah, and I think I want to do something. Let's see. Uh, Liz, you need to speak louder for the WIS okay. people to hear you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I think I want to make a glow a bit. Ooh, yeah, I like Ooh, that. Okay. So now we have a glow on it. It's a glow, okay. glowing yeah golden sphere and it's right. about it's a little bit taller than Liz on the screen so check your body does it to represent teaching and learning in second life the um, feelings about it yeah mm -hmm. yeah I think it does it's it does um, uh, okay we're you know what I want to do I want to do something else to it okay we're hearing uh, her say twice Maggie I mean <laughs> Tom says she's feeling wealthy and sexy like Cleopatra right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see I think tell I me what do. you feel you have the basic uh, structure and then we'll just we'll play with it Okay. okay, so now I wanted to make it I wanted to make it do that. I wanted to make it spin. Right. This is making it rotate now. So it's rotating around uh, fairly Slowly. rapidly. Uh, uh, ask your body, does the rotation speed feel right to you? No, I think it needs to be actually some right now it feels more like this. <laughs> <laughs> now it's tumbling. It's tumbling around vertically. Right, right. Quite fast. Yes, that's the way it feels right now. Okay, all right. So, what I'd like you to, uh, is there anything else you want to add to this or do before we do the next process? No, I think this is pretty much good right now. This is the way oh. it feels. So now I'm working with Liz on this inside out procedure and I'm going to ask you to pretend that you're this object like a character in a play and I want you to describe yourself to Liz. Okay, well and I... Come around to the other side for the people in Second Life. <clears throat> come and stand near it and pretend that you are it and I'm going to stand in for you over here where you were standing. Let me see if I can back up the right way to this. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> okay, more like that. Well, then I'll come and stand in front of you here so you can yeah. talk to me yeah. as the object, okay? okay. So, so I put I... myself uh, in front of Liz so that as the object, she can talk to me. And I'm gonna ask her to actually role play it and use eye language. What are you like, object? <laughs> Um, well, I am 
pretty big and exciting and oh, out of control in a way. Uh-huh. And how, uh, if you consult your body at home, what's the feeling you, you have in your body as you look at your representation on the screen? Uh, jumbled. Jumbled. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling a little okay. jumbled and jangled by this whole process that I'm, that I'm doing here with Liz. Okay, great. Now come where I am, and I'd like you to uh, respond at, just as though you're in a dialogue, in a play with this character. What would you like to tell or ask the character? Would you slow down? <laughs> Well, no, you're you're really you're really um, not very useful to me this way. Okay, so let's see what it says or what what it wants to do or not doesn't want to do. Uh, you have and to I want to point out to the people on Wiz and in in Second Life here that my job as a facilitator is just to go along on Liz's trip and keep. Uh, encouraging her to to keep exploring the possibilities here. <clears throat> so, Liz, uh, Liz, baby, you got to slow me down. I can't do it by myself. You got to do it. Ah. Uh. So I think what I need to do to slow you down is to breathe a little bit here. Let me see. If I breathe, does that help? Now, what has happened is that we're now in a much slower rotation. Uh, Liz has breathed at home <laughs> in her biological body. And that appears to have uh, slowed the object down somewhat, yes? Yes, it, and, and I it feel like the right representation of the change. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't want you I don't want you to, to just not move, but I want you to right. be slow like this so I can enjoy you. In fact I'd like to this way I feel like I can get closer to you. All right, so go ahead and get closer and see how how object feels now. This is, uh, you know, if we were going to name it, what would we name this object? The excitement of virtual worlds. Okay, and particularly of teaching and learning in it. Yes, right, exactly. Okay, exactly. all right, so let's see what the object has to say now about this change. Well, um, as the object, I'm feeling much calmer. I'm feeling sort of proud of myself. I can kind of show off to everybody. See, I'll turn around. You can see all my different facets. Uh, I'm pretty wonderful. <laughs> so, Liz, Liz, I think that uh, thank you for slowing me down. Okay, great. All right, now we'll do one more little process, but you can probably guess that this could go on for a while and we could we could explore all the different things. But one thing uh, uh, I'd like to uh, ask you is, would you put yourself in a, in a new relationship to this object in some way or other? Well, let me see, what could I do? How about if I try this? I could try, let me see, I could do it. Woo, I like Woo! this. Woo. <laughs> okay, now see how your perspective about your experience of teaching and learning in Second Life changes with that way of placing yourself on your object. What could you say about it? Well, um, literally, I feel literally on top of the world. <laughs> No, I feel that I I can see differently up here. Um, on Wiz, she's put herself actually sat on her object, which is still slowly rotating, and now she's actually moving all around this space, 
And I'm noticing everybody around here now. I'm, I'm able to see you all as you're looking at me and I get a sense of a group of people who are really interested in me and in the ball. Okay, so you're more in contact with uh, with your students actually right now. Yeah, with yes, yes. Class. Okay, and that may suggest to you something about the, this whole little process here of mm -hmm. being out of control at first and then slowing down and then changing the relationship to the object and seeing how that changes your experience. It and does. I, that would be a good place for us to stop for the inside out demonstration. And now we're going to do the other one so that we can see what the difference is. Uh, right. I, I, I need to uh, ask the class, are you still with us? Uh, is this holding your attention? Are you uh, understanding what's going on? Okay, I hope you're writing down some ideas and questions. Okay, great. All right, Liz, now we're doing the one that is not as uh, natural for you. Right. Let's just see what happens if you do an outside-in procedure. I'm going to remind people in the class that this is where you empty your head, you empty yourself out, and you just start building. You build something that's going to flirt with you, that somehow attracts you. And you, you're not thinking about it, you're not assigning meaning, but just have fun building something. It does not have to be complicated. That's one thing. Uh, if you have people who are new to, to this building experience, there is a whole building um, menu in here of geometric objects. And, uh, you know, you can work with this very simply. So we don't have to do anything complex. And, and uh, by the way, Liz, you're welcome to do more than one object if that's what comes to you. You're not, okay. uh, you're not limited to one object necessarily. But just put something out. Let's see what happens. Okay, let me look. Let me think. Okay, I think I'm going to try this one. Pyramid. Okay. Okay. So here's a uh, again, uh, whiz people. She's starting with a white pyramid. Of course, it's got a point. It's got four sides. Right now, it's a white pyramid, and it's not quite as tall as she is. Fairly wide at the base. It looks like it might be, uh, you know, like a uh, little more than a yard wide if you were looking at it in uh, real in a real environment right on each side okay i think what i'd like to do with it i'm looking at it it's kind of boring right now so i think that i would like to put a color on it uh so what i think i'll do now is okay so uh uh, I'm wondering, uh, the people who are uh, in Second Life, you can use your camera controls uh, as uh, Liz uh, develops this to see all four sides of what she's doing. Right now, she's got a beautiful, like a violet color on, on this one side, purple, <coughs> reddish. Try. Oh, reddish. I don't like that color. I, I put a green in, but I don't like it. So I'm going to do, if you don't no. mind, I'm going to... I all change move. it. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So whatever the person's doing as an outside in thing should have some intrigue or appeal. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be all positive and beautiful. It, it can represent different things later on. But to start with, it should be an object that you're interested in. That is the person who's building it is interested in and wants to find out more about. That's the guideline. Does that help you, Liz? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And All right. Let me see, I'm going to do black now. Black, yeah, yeah. purple, uh, green, and 
white. Uh, are you going to keep this side I'm white? Gonna, there. That's, but that is actually, I want it to make that kind of like, that's, well, that's supposed to be a silver. One, silver. One side okay. It's yeah. a silvery yeah. glowing, silverly, silvery, whitish right. silver. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. now, now check your body at home and ask if this object is the right width, the right size, the right opacity for uh, to uh, capture your interest. Or is there any other change you want to make to it? Mm. I think I want to add some other kind of shape to it. Ah, okay. All right, so I'm going to try. Let me see what happens if I do this. Oops. So now Liz is putting out something that looks like a donut with a large hole. What is that shape called? A to uh, torus. Torus, a torus. And she's kind of thrown it onto the point, but now she's raising it. And it's at an angle. Notice that it's not uh, straight up on the point. It's above this object, and it's at an angle. And right. Uh, Liz, I suggest, too, that you walk all around your object to see how how the relationship of those two feels to you. Oh, I want to change the color of the object, of oh, the thing above, though. Okay. Okay. See, things occur to you when you're doing this outside-in procedure. Things occur to you as you go along. And if you stay out of your head and just work with the object, all kinds of things can happen. Okay. Let's see. Let me try that. Okay. That looks good to me. Uh, so, so this has made the Taurus light blue. <clears throat> and it's kind of hovering over the pyramid. Okay. Right. And I guess if people uh, who are on watch the YouTube later they'll be able to see all this right right okay one more thing I want to do with it <laughs> okay okay go for it <laughs> <laughs> we're getting we're coming up upon seven I want to make sure that you have time also to do and I want to do something with this. Okay, though. Our timing is okay. All right. So now, Liz, what have you done? Tell people what you've done. Well, I made the pyramid keep turning, rotate, turn. It's a slow, slow rotation. Right. And I've made this thing above it. I haven't got a clue as to what these things are. That's okay. That's perfect. <laughs> um, that's, that's also turning in its own way. I don't know if they're turning together. I can't quite figure that out. <clears throat> hmm. um, you know, why don't you ask them? <laughs> we can carry okay. to the objects now and ask them. I guess that might be a good idea, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, you totally flummox me. Well, who, who, you know, what are you? <laughs> what are you doing? <sighs> So you want me to be now, the object? Remember, folks, that in the back of our minds is the original focus. So now what we're going to do is force fit the focus to the object. Like, how is this what, what Liz has created? What, how does that illuminate anything that she thinks or feels about teaching and learning in second life okay Liz so you have four different colors you mm -hmm. have different shapes and you have two objects in a, a certain kind of relationship to each other mm -hmm. you can start anywhere that pulls you okay uh, so I'm going to ask the object itself the question you mean the pyramid <clears throat> yeah the pyramid Mm -hmm. Right. So, what are you? What? Why are you all these different colors? Great. And now, uh, 
if you want to walk around with one side of a color as you talk to it and then go to the next side, tr figure out how you can <laughs> do this. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I see that you're moving. I'm, I'm looking at, at you, the you purple side. Tell me something about yourself. Okay, Can you so, walk with the purple? Can you be with the purple while it's moving? And think at the same time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that may be like a belly and head rub, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, m maybe you can and maybe you can't, but... Um, I like the fact... I. I like the fact that you are, you know, you you kind of move around at your own pace, regardless of me, of my interest, um, and yet you're not moving so fast that I can't enjoy you. So tell me about yourself. I guess I, I'll say to you the whole object, tell me about yourself. Wh wh what are you? Okay, so now the object is going to speak to Liz and inform her about what it's about. Well, I'm obviously multifaceted. Uh, I am different colors because I contain many things in me. My purple is a sort of uh, richness about me. My green is like uh, newness, freshness. My black is difficulty, effort, and my silver is my beauty. I don't know where that came from, but that's what came out. Lovely. All right, so would you repeat those, those four for us? Uh, uh, the uh, purple is richness, right? right? And the green is freshness. Green is black. The black okay. is effort, difficulty, difficulty, and the silver is is the sort of uh, beauty of me. Okay. So what do those adjectives have to do with your experience of teaching and learning in Second Life? Well, I guess they really encapsulate uh, what it what I think is important here, I, I guess. My yep. experience of, my experience of it really is just being here in Second Life and and uh, creating an educational space and being educated myself here. I think all these facets of this pyramid are things I have experienced. Okay. Now, I notice uh, we're, we, we can't take the time uh, to uh, go into detail on each one, but because most of what you have here is positive, I'd like to go to the black one, mm -hmm. which sure. you said has to do with effort. Right. And have you just, as the black, speak to Liz about what is effortful about your being here to teach and learn? Well, I, I am part of this whole thing that I am in, this pyramid here, that is uh, heavy, things don't always go well, I don't always understand, I find it uh, sometimes really hard to not give up. Okay, that's plenty, sweetheart. <laughs> that, 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 that's a very good uh, demonstration of how a part might speak to an avatar. Now, let's just not um, ignore that blue Taurus on top. Uh, could you be that for a minute and, and say who and what you are? I'm a separate but connected even though I don't look like I'm connected um, aspect of you down below but you move with 
you down below. So that's one way you're connected, that you right. keep moving with you down below. I'm much lighter. I'm, I'm sort of playful. I'm, I'm tilted a bit because I feel very playful. Mm -hmm. And everything down below feels a little bit too serious. You feel too serious down below. So oh. I'm the one that brings you up. All right. Now, you notice that uh, uh, right there is a little polarity. And if I were going to work longer with Liz, I would work on getting more into the dialogue between the playful part here in SL, who comes in here to teach and learn, and the serious part, and what the balance is. The other, uh, we could do many other things. We could make the uh, pyramid translucent, and she could go inside it and see what it's like looking at her experience from the inside out. We could also take each of the colors and make different objects and see how we could play with those uh, to make a, an entirely different object made out of those colors. You get the idea? There are infinite kinds of possibilities for playing with these symbolic representations. And each time you get some different kind of perspective or insight that you didn't have initially. So I think we'll stop the demo now. Uh, Liz, I want to give you a chance simply to respond to your experience of what came to you that was different or fresh or that you hadn't thought about a million times before? Well, I think it's not so much that I haven't thought about it, but I experienced it differently this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of it feels different when I do it this way. And I see connections among things that I hadn't seen before. Okay, yes. So making connections is one thing that happens. So now I, I'm, I'm wondering whether the uh, wonderful three people sitting in our <laughs> classroom here, we, we lost one, one or two along the way, um, whether you jotted down any questions uh, or comments that you wanted to make about what you have witnessed. And uh, uh, you can speak in voice or put it in chat, and I will read what you write, OK? But please don't take too much time, because uh, we also want to uh, turn this over to Liz for her to do her, her part of this, her own teaching and learning. Anything you want to say about that, either in voice or in the chat bar? And yes. I the people who are on the WizIQ too, right? Yes, yes, you can put things there. And can someone uh, let us know, Maggie, what, what they're saying there? I think Maggie does. Maggie can. OK, Maggie, I love how visceral this is. I can see, I can see the Wiz chat. OK, so if we're getting any questions or comments, I'd like, I'd like to have them. That would be wonderful. Uh, participation and feedback. I like this to be interactive if possible. And I'm begging you, Ewan and Jasmine, <laughs> since, since you're our audience here in Second Life. Tom had said while it was happening that the object he thought of was a, an elongated shimmering light blue pyramid. In other words, if Tom were doing it, that's a good point. Each person has their own symbolic representations that mean something to them. Uh, and that's exactly what you, uh, you know, one of the uh, directions I gave you was if you went along for the ride, you know, how would you represent the same question of the, uh, what it's like, how you feel about teaching and learning in Second Life? Okay, more, more, more questions, comments. I want to take at least five minutes with this before we uh, turn this over to Liz. Yes, to uncover more unconscious. 
emotional connections to what you're doing. Exactly. I'd love to hear from some other people, please. For one thing, I want to know whether, you know, what you were watching was of interest and whether it made sense, whether you got enough of a, a taste of it to understand what it is that we're trying to do here. Are people still here? They're maybe shy. Everybody? No. Ewan's not shy. Read that out loud. <laughs> Tom said it was very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. I mean, that's uh, T-O-M. I've got my friend Tom in here, too. T-H-O-M. <laughs> Tom, Tom B, that was Tom H who said that. I don't know if Tom B is still here. Probably is not. You lost connection for a couple of minutes. Okay. Mm. Um, anyone else still here who could comment on this? I guess, I guess we're not going to get comments. Um, but that's one of the things that I prize most in my classes is, is the interactive uh, part of what people experience and what they want to know more about and what they, how they feel they can apply it. So we should, anyway, say, we should say also, Marley. Yeah, let me, let me just finish my sentence. You have my name. If you want to write to me afterwards and share some of this, maybe you need time to think about it. I would really love to hear from you, okay? Uh, Liz, what were you going to say? That normally you also invite people who are watching to come in and try this themselves. And I think when people have their own experience of it, it's yes. different for them. It's, you know, yes. they, they feel it from the inside. That's right. And, and I, I hope that you do experiment with this and see what happens. Uh, I do want to mention that later on this year, I'm going to offer a training. Uh, Maggie, I assume that we can get the names of people who, who uh, registered for this class. And uh, I'll, I'll let you know about it. I want to train people mm -hmm. who would like to learn how to do this kind of symbolic modeling to be able to do it in their own venues. And uh, so that's going to happen later. Uh, I think that we're now um, ready to turn this over to you, Liz. And thank you so much for uh, doing the demo with me. You're, you're really wonderful to work with. Well, you're very welcome. Maggie, how much time do I have? 15 minutes to do the rest? OK. Oh, we don't have to be exact. 20, Apparently. 25. I don't know. Maggie just said 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, the next speaker is already, already ready and waiting for her. Oh, okay. I, okay. So why don't we, um, why don't we walk a little bit together if we can, if you don't mind, Maggie? Anybody here? I'd like to take you right now um, across the bridge into the rest of the Whole Brain Health Fairgrounds and give you a little taste of what we offer here. So, okay, thank you. Starlight, for following me. Let's go across the bridge. Always a challenge to cross a bridge, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now that you've seen one wonderful example of the kind of teaching and learning we value so highly here, I'd like to take you on a brief guided tour of the Whole Brain Health Fairgrounds to give you a broader idea of the rich learning opportunities that can be created in Second Life. So if you'll stay close to me, we'll start by crossing the bridge, which we just did. And uh, I'd like to show you some of the areas 
I should explain that what you see here will be very different soon because we're moving to a full sim with Rockcliffe University, but my concept and goals will remain the same. I became active. Why don't you guys try the drums? I want to show people how the drums work. That would be great if you can do that. Thanks. Maggie, you can do it too. <laughs> Why are those drums backwards? So I became active in Second Life about two years ago now. Just a year ago, I started developing the fairgrounds and held my first fair day. This coming weekend will be a year. And we will have a fair day this Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. You're all invited to come to it. My goal here is to use what researchers in neuroscience, gerontology, psychology, and creative arts are discovering about brain health, and by extension, total well-being, to provide visitors with a rich experiential learning environment. The gold sign over here, I'm going to walk over to it so you can see it, tells you the major areas of life that current research says we need to pay attention to if we want to nourish our brains and improve the quality of our lives. So the spiritual aspects, the creative aspects, the physical aspects, the social and cognitive aspects of life are extremely important. And everything on the fairgrounds is related to these basic research-based areas of concentration or focus. So as a side note, I am drawing on my many years of experience outworld, that is in first life or real life, in higher education, where I first taught literature and composition and then counseling at risk students, and in working with individuals as a licensed psychotherapist as well. I added coaching to this mix with a special interest in aging well. My husband and I are both semi-retired now and are mostly teach in lifelong learning programs. At conferences on aging, we often present a program we created calling, called Music for an Ageless Mind, which combines music and brain research. And for the past seven years, we've been writing a blog together called Music and Happiness, which explores the relationship between music and well-being. Carrying our experience and interest into Second Life has been fascinating. One result is the fairground here. Another is the community of creative elders that I recently started here to offer communal activities to people over 50 based on this research that I draw on. So as you were drumming, did you notice anything about your physical body at the computer? Did you unconsciously respond to the beats of the movements you're watching? From now on, try focusing on your responses to what you do here. This in itself is a creative experience. You sat up a bit. <laughs> That's right, right. And you may have felt some real vibrations in your own body. Creativity is one contributor to brain health, as you saw here. You saw a great example of creative process at the Octagon. We have a number of teachers here who offer creative programs ranging from deep discussions to hands-on creation of artworks to fun building classes. Let's walk over here. Follow me. As you may see, the sign says swimming hole. Now, if you click on one of those blue balls, a little lifesaver comes out. And then you right click on that. You sit in it and you start to swim. So you might want to try that. My vision is to make the fairgrounds a bridge between real life and in-world. A school for well-being where anyone can learn in both traditional ways and in ways particular to virtual worlds. <laughs> there she goes. Right. Right. Through immersive education. Oh, she's, a great, she's a great swimmer. That's right. That's right. So I'll show you what I mean here. So look at look around. We've got two people swimming now in the pond. That's great. It's all in the animation. She's exactly right. So look around with your camera. You'll notice info signs all around, like one right here in front of me. 
If you click on them, you can go to different web pages where you'll find information on the role each area plays in brain health. Remember the gold sign? So this is an example of one area people should include in daily life. I try to make these pages as interesting as possible by using YouTube videos and links to other websites, but this is still pretty conventional as a way of learning. The immersive part, the exciting part of virtuality, is the interplay between an avatar's experience in Second Life. <laughs> Starlight says towel, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the, towels. <laughs> and the person's response to that uh, to that experience. So it's the interplay between an avatar's experience in Second Life and the person's response at the computer to that, to that experience. Exercise is a very important component contributing to brain health. Here your avatar can swim, ride a bike, jump on the trampoline. You might want to run over to the trampoline or try these mats here, these green mats. If you go over to them and click on them, you'll find yourself doing crunches <laughs> and a variety of other things. <laughs> so what's the point of watching your avatar exercise? Well, raising awareness is valuable and can be motivating to do more exercise outworld. We really are looking for a transfer of experience. Okay, I'm going to try something else here on this mat. I'm going to try jumping jacks next. See, you can do a variety of things. And how about this? While we watch our avatars here, a retired phys ed teacher leads us in real exercises that we are doing at our desks at the same time. We get quite a workout at home through SL that way twice a week. Those are programs we offer through uh, Whole Brain Health and through the Community of Creative Elders. So now everybody, stop doing this and come on with me. We're going to go on and we're doing a really fast tour here. <laughs> right, you have Tai Chi. Well, I'll show you over here. We've got, we've got a variety of things. We've got wonderful, um, make sure you stay with me, wonderful yoga mats here. I'm not going to stop because of the time, because we are so tight with time. So spirituality is another component of well-being. What is spirituality? Well, one place you can, you can express it is on those yoga mats. Try the yoga mats briefly while I'm talking. Having a sense of purpose and meaning seems to be extremely important for human beings. This may or may not be religious. Yoga is, for many people, a spiritual experience. So is contemplation. We have contemplation cushions over here. I'm going to sit on one and breathe, because I seem to, need to be doing a lot of breathing today. And meditation as well. Next to this, there is a meditation garden with a beautiful harp that you can actually play if you want to sit there and just listen to music that you're making yourself. You might want to come here sometime to try the yoga mats and the meditation cushions and even play the harp. And down at the end there are two wonderful mats to do shamanic journeys which have sound attached to them and again notice what happens in your body as you're doing these things or watching your avatar do these things. Your body at home. We don't pay enough attention to that. Now I want to go next to one of our prizes here is the Community Cultural Hub. Social connection. Here's one of those signs again. You see the yellow, the gold sign. Strong social connections are key to brain health. The hub is one of many places here where people can meet each other in meaningful ways. Here Ewan, who happens to be with us, and Starlight, who happens to be with us, are creating an information complex where visitors can learn about the great variety of communities available in Second Life and easily explore the greater Second Life world. Maggie, can we go inside? Is that okay? Can you take the camera in? 
I thought Ludo, uh, <laughs> I thought that Ewan, okay, Ewan, can you come inside? Ewan, can you speak? All right, why don't you explain to people, yeah, show people here. I, we have a very, yeah, very little time, but. You can't, excuse me just a minute, Maggie, you can't hear Ewan. Okay, do we need you to do something at this point? You can't hear Ewan. All right, Ewan, talk, okay, let me come over closer to you, see if that helps. I can hear you fine. Oh, because you're not in WizIQ, maybe we can't hear you. So let me let me um, kind of paraphrase what you said. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't real. Oh, which means that the okay, if people are not in there, um, in WizIQ will not be heard. So can you type a few things in, and I'll read them off just quickly, or give me the card. Okay, let me just read that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Maggie, your your I think your um, microphone is on because I'm hearing that sound before. Okay. So this so is the community cultural info teleport hub is a coordinated development of easy to access teleport links in the forms of posters containing brief information and LMs. I know that the um, that the library upstairs contains a lot of information, a lot of interviews you've been doing with people who are actually active in Second Life that gives people who come here a, a really strong sense of the um, variety of interests people have here and the kinds of places they've built here. And we consider you to be a, a wonderful asset to the Whole Brain Health Fairgrounds and I'm so glad you and Starlight are here. So I hope people will come here, will come here and bubble here. So perhaps we should stop with that because I know we're getting close to the end. And I did want to make one more stop or at least talk a little bit. Let me show you another place here. Um, I guess the person who is running it will not be able to speak. But yes, I know they can hear me. <laughs> but yes, but uh, please follow me. I I'd like to take you over to the classroom space, just in sense. By the way, we're going to go by the stage that will be used for the uh, for the fair grounds uh, fair day. 
we're going to have geisha dancers who are performing. Our theme is, this this Sunday is the theme of grace or gracefulness, graciousness, all of those things. So we built a stage for them to come and perform for us, and we'll have a whole variety of activities there. I want you to remember that behind every avatar is a human being. Relationships here can become very close, even when people live halfway around the world. So I would like to take you for the final section here. And by the way, we're seeing only half the fairgrounds. So I hope people will come and go down. As I said, we're going to have a whole new place very soon, which is going to be quite exciting. This area is the classroom area. It's an example of the cognitive piece that we need to incorporate into daily life. One of the most valuable things anybody can do is to push yourself to learn things that are unfamiliar and difficult because this activity literally grows new neuronal connections until the very end of life, which I think is very important for people to understand. That doesn't mean that learning has to be boring or grim. We offer classes and discussions that stimulate and surprise. We're lucky to have so many excellent teachers, facilitators, and leaders joining us to do this. Like almost everything else here, our classrooms are out of doors as much as possible. Come back, we've moved to a better to get a better sense of all that we offer, where we had to keep on expanding. I do have a note card uh, which lists all the different places on both levels of the fairgrounds. Upstairs, for example, I call it upstairs, it's above on the platform, we have a wonderful uh, multiple intelligence experience where you can go around and decide what kind of intelligence you have, whether it's musical or artistic or kinesthetic or whatever, and, and have discussions about that. So Tara Shepard, who made it for us, is going to be discussing and le leading a guided tour this Sunday as part of Fair Day. We have a 3D maze up there built by someone, which requires a lot of uh, concentration. And we have a poetry maze that I set up where you can find lines of a poem and put them together and send them to me and I give you money for that. So that's kind of fun. We have a lot of other things. We have a Center for the Arts for Well-Being and um, that is where we have a library and classes for writers and creative thinkers and so on. So I'd like you just to see this place. We don't have time to show you much of anything here, but I'd like you just to look around. These are all things that our associate director of the fairgrounds, Tuya Hines, has made and teaches people to make without using scripts. In Second Life, scripts are a normal way of making things move, like making us do those kinds of swimming and so on. And normally people have to use those, but Tuya has developed a way, is developing from someone else she learned from, a whole variety of things that do not work um, by scripts. So if you'd like to jump on the swing with me and just feel what that feels like, we'll kind of end the tour here by doing that. Maybe we can get a picture. Let's see if we can do that, if I can climb up on there. Just right click, sit up on it. Ooh, come and join me if you can. If you'd like to subscribe to the Whole Brain Health Fairground News, there is a subscriber right here by the entrance to that dome, the physics testing dome. You could touch that and, and subscribe, or you can join the whole brain, fair, whole brain Health group in Second Life, or you can write to me at wisdomseekersmeetinghouse at gmail.com. So this is just a taste of the fairgrounds themselves. And uh, huh, somebody is, <laughs> yes, Starlight has, has using the seesaw. 
I'm on the swing. Other people can join me on the swing if they want Maggie, to. Maggie can't stop walking in place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, Maggie. Oh, dear. <laughs> so thank you for coming today. Thank you. We, we are both thrilled that uh, uh, you came. You were able to see this wonderful place and hear all about our programs. And we hope to see a lot of you here uh, later on. To you, join me on the swing. <laughs> so, are we formally ending? Uh, formally yes. ending the session. Right, we are. This is the uh, the end. I know Mag yes. Maggie has to go. Thank you so much. Um, are you going? You'll send us the uh, uh, 